what's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome to another episode of the Rams Skinny here on the LAFB Network, the Rams LAFB YouTube channel, and anywhere you get your podcasts. And of course, LAFBnetwork.com, where it all ties in all together. Thank you, as always, for making us a part of your day. Talking all things Rams football after a, I mean, let's say it was a football game. I wouldn't call it a super <laughs> exciting game, but a 13 to 9 win over city rival Los Angeles Chargers. We're going to get all into that. Things we saw, things we need to look forward to in the future and whatnot. But first, let me welcome in, as always, my better half, the man, the myth, the legend, Skinny T. What's up, my man? How you doing? How was uh, how was the weekend? Ah, it was it was great, man. Um, it you know we're getting ever closer to football, and it always it you know there's a different feeling in the air, uh, for us and, and probably there everybody watching when when there's you know actual things happen and then there's there's football of consequence within a few days, really. I mean, if you look at the college college football, uh, there's one one game on the 24th, I think. Yeah, Notre Dame, right? Overnight, no, no, they're not they're not playing that early. It's like okay. something like Florida State, Texas A&M or something like that. Okay. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, I just know because USC plays the first and UCLA plays the 31st. So we're two weeks away from that. But yeah, I mean, football is here. Fall is in the air. My daughter, first day of school today ever. Wow. TK started today. That was a that was an interesting. Yeah, today was just a weird, it was a weird feeling. Like we dropped her off, come home and. I mean, I still have to work. I would say my wife's like, I, I don't know what to do now. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh my you, gosh, the world is your oyster now. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, weird. She's getting so big. Just about four years or well, coming up on five years old here, I suppose. In yeah, a few four and a half. Yeah, wow. four and a half. So, so she started I'm school. Fine. So school means football is back. What if I'm ready for the weather to cool down? It's real hot out here and where me and you are. But you know, it's nice. It's sunny. We can't complain. So, nah. but. Rams fans, hopefully not a lot to complain about. Uh, first and foremost, Matthew Stafford progressing back. You did an article today, so I'll let you comment on it. But still what? Having tightness, but as McVay said, arrow pointing up, right? Yes. Yes. Arrow pointing up on Stafford. Uh, back at practice, uh, just doing the no drills, just kind of the walkthrough portion, uh, stretching and individual stuff. So not back completely, which, you know, we're all we're all in favor of of letting letting the old man rest his, his weary bones and, and ligaments and muscles for yeah. as long as he needs to up until week one, um, yeah. because there's a precarious situation waiting for week one. If Stafford can't go, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo not starting Stetson Bennett, though, Stetson Bennett looking better in better. week two, not, you know, not multiple uh, interceptions, multiple turnovers, but, um, <laughs> you know, not, not the four, not the four he, he had in week one. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we asked for improvement and I guess there was improvement. Um, but yes, good that Stafford's tracking better. He's obviously earned it and we don't, it's like, we need to see him in training camp anymore. Like he's good. Knows the system has some chemistry. I just wish when I played ball back in high school, I could just go to my coach, like mm, get a little thigh tightness. Can I take a week off? Like, you know, <laughs> It's like, no, you, you, you fight through that, but he's obviously earned it. Super Bowl champ soon to be MVP. And you can make that bet at betonline.ag. Use promo code believe. Tell them the guys, the Rams LFB sent you. Uh, we like that bet Rams over under eight and a half wins. We like that as well. Take the over. I just think a lot of people are doubting this Rams team, but, um, yeah, so betonline.ag is where you can do all that. One of our sponsors, one of our good friends. Tell them the guys uh, told, told we sent you. So, but yeah, first and foremost, Stafford trending back. So it doesn't seem like there is any indication that he will not be a full go uh, week one. Do you expect next week for them to kind of ramp him back up as that is now game week practice next week? I mean, yeah, he's he Sean McVay basically said, you know, we've, we've got plenty of time. We're we're in no hurry at this point. Uh, you know, we've got two and a half weeks before our first game. So uh, I think, you know. I don't think he needs to go through necessarily exactly all of the, you know, the, the grueling work necessarily. I think for him, it's mostly above the shoulders at this point in his career. Yeah. Um, and, you know, th there's a question, will he have the same kind of chemistry uh, that Stetson Bennett has with a guy like Jordan Whittington or Xavier Smith? Those guys we'll talk about more. Um, but, you know, really, this is, is, is week one and every team is heading into this 
in into week one with uh, these kinds of concerns in in their back pocket. So, um, you know, I think the above uh, above the neck work shouldn't shouldn't put any stress on on that hammy. No, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, maybe the team that's the most similar and also most concerned was the team they played on on Saturday, which would be the Chargers, who Justin Herbert was back at. Not that we're going to get into it, but Justin Herbert was back at practice today after he's been in a walking boot with plantar fasciitis. And, um, you know, we were talking, we were kind of joking before we started that, you know, Stetson Bennett, which we're going to get into, um, but it doesn't seem as dire as the Chargers backup room with Easton Stick, Max Duggan, who they released today, their former seventh round pick out of TCU. Um, and then they have Luis Perez also of the UFL. So uh, as dire as it may kind of look a little bit, with mistakes, at least with Stetson Bennett, it, it still is a little better than what the Chargers got going. If Justin Herbert is not able to go week one or week two, or, or that thing flares up later in the season, the Chargers may be in a real, real hurt spot. I mean, Rams might have uh, trade capital at that point for the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Uh, you know, um, you know, we we're we're friends with the, all sorts of fan bases, and and seeing uh, you know the those those Charger people just pining for a backup quarterback like Stetson Bennett was was funny. And I I think that I'll you know I'll ask you this, you know, a lot. I, I feel like a lot of Rams fans came out of that game feeling really really good about where Stetson Bennett uh, sits from from your vantage point. Do you think that he's made that kind of leap and that kind of jump into okay? Uh, we can we can put the ball in his hands any given Sunday, and he's and he's going to be able to uh, operate the offense at a at a level that they'll keep him in in whatever game he has to play in. Yeah, I mean the first drive got me real excited. Um, you know, obviously it was a scripted first drive, but they're going up against I believe it was eight of the eleven starters on the Chargers defense. Um, if I was counting correctly, the only three not playing were Bosa, Mac, and Derwin James, and all other eight defenders on the field were are slated to be starters for that defense. Um, and so they were able to drive all the way down the field, obviously had to stall at the end there and settled for a field goal, but got points, operated the offense well, looked real confident in, in play call and play design and, and the throws he made, I thought looked good. So that got me real excited. You know, it was the up and downness from then on, but it definitely isn't, you know, where he's at in his career. The fact, as we said last week, as long as we see improvement in week two and then see improvement in week three, I'll feel good about it. And so that's what I do. You know, I think he had a, a, an overall, I would say, a good performance. It wasn't putrid like what the Chargers put up, I think, going up against the Rams, two, threes, and fours. And they were not still able to get in the end zone and what, nine points or whatever. So I uh, haven't scored a touchdown yet in this preseason, I, I believe, for the Chargers. So. Uh, it's not that, and obviously Jimmy G when back will be the guy, which, you know, again, we're talking about backups here. So this isn't like, this isn't like what the season's going to be defined by, but you want to have some a semblance of security, especially when we're talking about a quarterback in Matthew Stafford, that is not a concern, but has not practiced for three days until today and has tightness. And, you know, at his age is going to get bumps and bruises. So you want to have some semblance of competence behind him. And I think. In his second full game of action, in my opinion, I think Stetson Bennett showed that it, it's trending that way. I wouldn't say it's there yet. It's still, you know, a work in progress. But if you think about it, he's essentially played, what, his fourth total NFL game after mm-hmm. playing three, not even full games, but playing a few quarters last preseason, then missing and now being back for two full games. So, I mean, in that sense, it's trending better. So but what was your takeaway? Yeah, no, I, I'm... I'm probably pretty aligned with you. I was, I was thinking about this in terms of uh, watching Caleb Williams play, um, which my criticism of him was that, you know, he's making plays out of pocket off platform and it, that's all very exciting. But um, I started thinking about the, uh, the director, David Mamet, who uh, his, his instructions to actors are uh, hit your mark and say your line. Um, and that's what I want to see more of from Stetson Bennett. I do like the out of the platform stuff. I do like that he can make the throw down the field, the JJ lap with two A's in his name. Um, you know, cause that's a, that's a throw that Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't proven he can make yeah, um, yeah. In, in quite some time and, and missed a big throw in the Super Bowl That looked a lot like that. Um, but uh, you know, so I just want, you know, he, he seems more comfortable outside of the pocket. 
Um, you know, and we've seen quarterbacks be wildly successful uh, playing like that, like uh, Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's the ceiling, um, that's great. Um, but that's, I mean, to me, I feel like specifically Shanahan, McVay kind of uh, uh, coaches want their quarterbacks to, you know, hit their mark, say your line, you know, get yeah. things out on time. I'm, I'm designing these plays for you. You know, when Jordan Whittington's out there, he's making those plays in space because that's created uh, by the offense for him to just be wide open like that. Yeah. So those plays are out there and he's, and he's, and he's missing some of those occasionally. So, you know, I'm not a hundred percent on him. I'm not, uh, you know, waving the flag that, to cut cut Jimmy Garoppolo now we found found the guy um but but some 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 good things to see yeah that's been the the biggest head scratching kind of I don't know if you call it roster building but just in there in McVay and Sneed's decision making in the back of quarterback is they've never I'm trying to think back like I really don't think they've ever had a backup that was aligned in play style to the starter like I mean Jimmy like Walford was very different than Jared Goff, right? And obviously yeah. he was here too with with Stafford, and um, they, they've never like really had that. And that that's you and you see that a lot. Sometimes you're just taking what you can get. Like, okay, this is the most talented guy that can be backup. Like, we'll make it work. But to me, it makes sense. You want a guy that plays the exact same style as your starter. So similar to how the Rams built their running back room now, to where if whether it's Corum or Kyron, you're calling the same plays because they can do the same thing as good. The backup's never going to do the same thing as good as the starter, but if he at least that's his skill set, the game plan will never change regardless who's in there. And it seems like always in this whole McVay era, correct me if I'm forgetting someone, but they've always had a backup that was a very different style quarterback than either Goff or Stafford. And Bennett is kind of that way too. I mean, he he can do stuff in the pocket we've seen at Georgia, but to what you just said, so far his time in the pros which has just been preseason action, but his best moments have been off platform, off script, evading pressure. It's not been the dialed up play call because he hasn't been able to hit that. And that's the bread and butter of the McVay, McVay offense is we're not seeing Stafford run around. It's drop back, do your reads, your progressions, find the open guy and hit it. And that hasn't been Bennett's strong point. That wasn't John Walford's strong point that you could argue again, it was for three games, but that wasn't Carson Wentz's strong point. Um, any of these guys. So it's just, it's just really an interesting thing of, of why, like I always think of obviously a huge drop off, but if you remember Peyton Manning in Indy, his backup, like even looked like him half the time. Like you think of Jim <laughs> Sorgi, they, they were, they were awful. So I mean, that's, it's not a great example because they were really, really bad, but literally like looked in terms of size, like how they ran the face mask they wore like it was a spitting image of Manning because they were like, we need to run the same offense. We're not going to change it. So anyway, I'm yeah. Yeah, I mean, done. <laughs> with, with Walford and, and those guys, I know that McVay always uh, liked that they could run the scout team. Um, so that if this they were true. facing, facing a mobile quarterback, that the defense may be more uh, uh, prepared. Uh, but, you know, I think about an article that I wrote earlier this year about them going after Sam Howell or, not maybe not going after him, but they were really interested in trading for yeah. Sam Howell with Washington. Yeah, that's another one of those guys. You know, the backup I think of is probably the closest to any starter that they've had was Blake Bortles. Uh, that <laughs> yeah. one year, which yeah. uh, er, th- that was er- early in my LAFB days and got in a, a little bit of an argument with our good buddy uh, Chauncey Talese there about <laughs> about uh, Bortles being the perfect backup uh, quarterback. You know, he, I mean, he started he started and won some games, and I'm not saying he's he's anybody uh, special, but that was that's probably McVeigh's best backup. I can't remember who preceded him, uh, but uh, I mean, like it, John Mannion it, for some time, yeah, like that yeah, may have been for that. Um, you know, we're we know we're you know we're deep in preseason when we've gone 15 minutes with just backup quarterback talk, <laughs> uh, but it's so true. But this is why, and then we'll move on. This is why you and I think we're so big on Spencer Rattler in the draft. Cause he didn't, when did he end up, when did he, did he end up going not to the fifth round? Is that when he got taken by the saints? It sounds right. Yeah. It was like later than even we thought, cause we thought it was going to have to be like third round. Third. Yeah. Um, I'll look it up when you're talking or something, but he can do stuff. You know, I didn't watch a ton of his college film, but I watched enough. 
like he could do stuff off platform. Like he had that skill set, but he was a really good pocket pra- passer with a great arm talent. Like his ceiling was his arm talent inside the pocket. And all indications are not all indications. I should say there's some murmurs that he's like challenging Derek Carr for that starting role. Like he's having a really good camp. Not saying that's going to happen, but there's been like chatter about that. And that, Wait. if that was here behind Stafford for three years, like that would get me really excited about the potential heir apparent, a guy that fits the system that plays just like Matthew Stafford with the same skill set. Instead, we're, we're talking about a guy that like, does he feel good being QB three and can he stay in the pocket when you need him to? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. And I mean, QB evaluations are just anybody that thinks they're good at them. Uh, they should be making a lot of money. <laughs> they, they should be, they, they, shouldn't, be, us, they yeah. shouldn't be twitty, tweeting uh, or Xing, uh, you know, their life away. Uh, they should be, they should be working for a team if you're, if you're that good at evaluating quarterbacks, um, you know, but you know, we were, we were both high uh, on Rattler. Um, and he was a fifth round pick. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I like being right. It, it's not the end, end all be all for me. But if he ends up being a starting quarterback for the Saints by the end of the year, you know, I might take a little bit of a, of a victory lap. Speaking of victory laps, our score predictions for this last game, yeah. Yeah, we're, we were pretty close. Yeah. We pretty well, we, the final was 13-9. I, I predicted 14-10 and yours was 14-13. I was 13-12. 13-12. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty dang close. Who would have taken if we were betting? You would have won that because I would have been over with my fourteen. I I don't know how the all the rules work, and I don't know what the the spread of this game was, but <laughs> if there is the even preseason spreads, but uh, let's yeah, move that, on. That's neither here here nor yeah. there. Just a quick quick little uh, victory lap for ourselves. <laughs> there you go. Every now and then you need those, right? Yeah, stop stop watches uh, right a couple of times a day. Yeah, that's right. At least at least twice, right? Um, yeah. So let's talk. So Bennett, we agree overall, good performance. Good to see improvement. I, we assume he'll play all of game three again. He should, I think we need to see another full game of him, but you know, good to see. Well, him he, he, he was pulled last year out of the, uh, the third game because in 10, I think in 10 dropbacks, he threw two interceptions and they were like, I think we've seen enough. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, I think this year that might be a little bit different. Hopefully yeah, a little, a little we'll different. see. I mean, he's at five picks already for the, for the preseason. So let's see if we can go through next game with none. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, what do you want to do? Stick with offense or, or jump yeah. over defense? Let's stick with offense. I think it's let's time. Start. We, the, the myth, the myth of Ryan Wendell is growing b- before our eyes. Rams, mm. uh, new offensive line, uh, coordinator. He's been here for two seasons. Um, what a phenomenal job he's done. Mm. Logan Bruss looking good. A couple Gorgeous. of rookies. What's that? I said gorgeous. Sorry. Keep no, going gorgeous. I, th- I thought you called him a fortress. <laughs> I was like, I, love I mean, that. played like a fortress. That's great. Yeah. 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 Uh, a couple of, a couple of rookies having really great uh, preseasons, Bo Limmer um, and Justin Dietrich playing a, cent- a lot of center and a lot of right guard, I believe, um, and doing a bang up job. I, they are not credited with any, any pressures allowed so far this season. And, um, and these are rookies, you know, and this is the backup. And they're keeping they're keeping uh, Stetson Bennett really clean. Just five pressures. We were expecting a bit more to come from this Charger, Chargers defense, but you know you always wonder with these kinds of things if it's a chicken or the egg. And you know Dallas wasn't putting up much of a fight. I didn't I didn't feel like in that game, but we thought the Chargers would. And and I you know they were facing off against some some proven NFL pass rushers, and they were keeping keeping Stetson Bennett clean. Yeah, I mean. Like we said, kind of at the top of the show, right? Like only three of the starting 11 Chargers defenders didn't play. Two of those obviously are their star pass rushers in, in Joey Bosa and, and Cleo Mack. But I mean, on the offensive line, they were, they were Tui, Tui Pelotu is like a, a big part of that defense. He played a lot of this game. And, you know, Puna Ford is a big guy in the middle. Only played, I think he played like seven total snaps, but it was out there in the very beginning of the game, um, among others. And I think this offensive line really, Rea- reacted well. Scott Matlock, another guy that's going to get a lot of playing time for this Chargers team. Bud Dupree, a-, a veteran. Morgan Fox, a veteran. All played in this game, and little to no pressures were given up by this this starting, uh, not starting this this Rams five. And you know, we saw I think from the top down, all guys look pretty good. Uh, even you know, adding 
Um, you know, Connor McDermott played 26 snaps, uh, who they added from, I guess not from the Patriots, played for the Patriots last year, but Adam just, you know, two weeks ago in camp and, and you mentioned the rookies and Warren McClendon. And, you know, I, I think it's just really encouraging that a, the development that we're getting out of Wendell and B in their draft process. Cause now you look at and Wendell, you know, there's a scout team for this, but the position coaches usually have some say and stuff in, in drafting their position guys they like, and they've obviously done their research. And so you look at the course of the last two years, who they've drafted and how they developed. And obviously this year being very quickly, it's only been, you know, a few months, but as you mentioned, Bo Limmer and, and others and, and undrafted free agent, Justin Dietrich and just their draft process on the offensive line has looked really, really good in years past when maybe the starting five was good. The backups were abysmal and you just had to pray they made it through healthy all season long. And luckily they did for most years, but now it's starting to look like, you know, there's some good depth there, which is encouraging yeah. as you go into the the slog of the season. So great stuff from Wendell and the offensive line. Well, and, and to your point, I mean, the, but guys like Bud Dupree and Tui, Tui, Tui Pelotu were playing in that first drive when Stetson Bennett led them down the field yeah. um, to get a his field best goal. drive, arguably, <laughs> arguably his best drive. Yeah. Uh, against, against some, some guys that are the ones. So really, really encouraged uh, by, by that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Bo Limmer second or in front of um, Joe Alt in terms of uh, his, his run blocking grade uh, from PFF. So uh, was he six round pick, six round pick, I believe. Bo yeah. Limmer. And uh, uh, beating out the fifth overall pick in terms of grading, which, you know, we always like to caveat uh, PFF's grades, uh, not always uh, fully the whole not story. The but, yeah. You know, in term in terms of rud blocking, it's hard. It's hard, really hard to know exactly, you know, how well a player is doing. But anyway, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. And, you know, pass blocking even better an 83 grade uh he yep. got in pass blocking 75 overall third highest graded ram offensively um on this team so you know really really solid and played 50 snaps so it wasn't like he played seven snaps and got those good grades like 50 snaps and had great output uh in all of those snaps 29 dropbacks 21 runs um so so really solid stuff from Bo Limmer as you mentioned the sixth round pick so i mean it's just really encouraging to see where this offensive line is especially Two weeks ago, before the preseason started, just in training camp, you have your three starters go down. And, you know, we we said it, many others said it, like, this is supposed to be the highlight of this team. They spent the most money on the offensive line for big-name players. This was supposed to be the thing we didn't have to ever talk about. The offensive line was going to be a top five. You're going to be great. You lose three. It wasn't panic mode yet. It was early, but it's like, okay, they signed Jonah Jackson, who had injury history. Like, what is this a foreshadowing of things to come? And now again, it's, it's preseason, but still with all the backups in, it's like, maybe this is the best unit. You have these top tier guys at the starting five, but now you have a lot of depth too. So, I mean, just really encouraging. I mean, if, if there's anything in this team, anything, any theme. So last year, our theme was better than expected. I think so far the theme's got to just be encouraging. I mean, the defense, which we're going to get to in a minute lights out again. And the offensive line depth has been great. Yeah, no. And, uh, you know, you're looking at, you know, Steve Avila is going to be there for a long time. Um, Kevin Dotson and, and, and Jonah Jackson are still, you know, not up there in age. You know, people are talking about Alaric Jackson in terms of can they upgrade at that position. But, I mean, then you look at Rob Havenstein, who's in his 10th season. He's been, you know, mostly healthy. But yeah. you're looking at 14 games last year played, 15, 2021, 20, 16, and 2020. 20, that was all of them back then. Uh, yeah. Nine and 19. So I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not worried about him, but he does get dinged up occasionally. Um, and so there are there are positions that they will need to fill um, in the in the near foreseeable future. Um, not saying this year, but uh, it. Depth is great, and this is this is what makes this Rams team truly special: is their ability to find these guys, the Dietiches, the sixth rounders, the fifth rounders, Puka Nakua, um, you know, undrafted free agent uh, Xavier Smith, Jordan Whittington, you know, another late rounder. So this yeah. is this is what makes this team, um, you know, really great rooting for. 
Yeah. And so just last caveat before we go to defense, um, because I know we've we've been real high on Justin Dietrich, and you know we said last week of of all the UDFA's, specifically offensively, we think he's got the best shot to make it. And you know when you look at roster construction, Bo Limmer also a center. So I think many would say like, well, you're not going to keep three centers, which I don't disagree with. But Justin Dietrich gives you a lot of versatility, as I've mentioned. I don't want to keep reiterating, but he played every position in college on the offensive line. Uh, his two years ago played guard started at guard every single game. And then last year started at center every single game for the first time. So they could keep him as a guard backup versatile to both those positions. So for anyone listening, saying like, Oh yeah, he's been good, but there's no way they keep three. And Bo Limmer obviously has been better. And, and he was the draft pick. Um, they could still keep Dietrich as that versatile can play kind of anywhere on the offensive line, specifically at the NFL level, just be inside, but can do guard or center. So anyway, just wanted to, Throw it out there because, yes, I agree. I don't think they keep three quote unquote centers, but you know, you want guys that can play everywhere. Certainly. Yeah. So, uh, last thing about the offense, just got to give him a shout out. Nikola Kalinich, highest graded Ram in offense, only 21 snaps, but still 91 offensive grade. So, touche. Nice. Anyone named Nikolic is a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to shout out uh, my guy from last year, my 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 ram my ram of the camp, my ram of 23 23 camp, Xavier Smith. Had a great game. Um yeah. not just as a receiver, he got uh five passes for 45 yards, but he also added another nine uh, as a rusher and um he picked up the Rams' longest punt return since 2021. <laughs> wow. Of 36 yards which um, isn't great. Even, even that, you know, not, it's, it's not like he took it to the house or anything like that, but um, you know, this is, this is uh, something they've been, they've been looking for since they've been, they were trotting a uh, Cooper cup out there. Not that long ago to return punts. I don't oh, know if you remember right. that, but <laughs> yeah, that was not that long ago, <laughs> just a few years ago. Um, so uh, just another guy to look at, um, you know, we were talking six or seven receivers. Are they going to keep on the 53 man ro- roster? And if, if uh, if it's seven, he makes he makes this roster for sure. So I know your answer, but I'll just ask you before we move on. If it comes down to Xavier Smith or Tutu Atwell, who are you keeping? And then who do you think the Rams are keeping? I think Tutu is going to be on this roster. If I if if I'm less need, I'm moving on from Tutu. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find a, a trade partner. I dropped uh, you know the Miami Dolphins is a you know they love speed. Can they add another speedy guy in there? Um, you know. Who knows? I don't know if the trade value is uh, of any note, yeah, but uh, they'll, they'll pick be. they'll pick up a sixth and seventh round or something like they could they could do that. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 done with the two two at well uh, experiment. I like the guy, um, uh, but uh, you know, I, yeah, I just like you know you look at what Xavier Smith did in this game. This kind of versatility may not look like that in the regular season, but um, you know, there's you know he, he he's a Brandon Powell kind of a guy. Yeah, and I like I like Brandon Powell a lot when he was a when he was a Ram. That was your guy, and, and and now now he's now he's doing good work too. I don't I don't remember what team he's with or uh, what exactly he did, but like uh, he's some good statistics recently. Yeah, he was with Minnesota last year. I can't remember if he, I think he's still there. Um, yeah. but he had some some good stuff with Minnesota. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they if they only keep six receivers, because I think we we all agree. You know, obviously Puka Cooper and and Robinson are your one, two, and three, and then probably Whittington and Johnson, whatever order you want to put, are four and five, um, in our opinion. And then six is kind of that Griffin or, or Tutu Atwell. Some people might say Atwell's four, you know, which based on draft stock, I could see that, but I just haven't seen anything that that proves that should be the case. He hasn't played at all preseason, so that usually indicates that he's kind of a lock to stay because if you're not going to play a guy like that, that means he's of starting quality. Um, usually everyone playing is fighting for spots. The only other thing I could think of why they're not playing is because they want to sneak him through to waivers. And if they, if he does have a blowout game in, in preseason, then he'll get snatched up. But you know, he's been in the league for three years. So I think teams have seen enough. If they want him. It doesn't matter if he plays in preseason or not. So based on that, I think it's safe to say he'll be, he'll make this roster. Um, but if they only keep six, and he's the sixth, and they don't t- keep 
Xavier because of that, to me, that's a mistake. But mm. I'm not the head coach of the Rams, so I, you know, McVay's done a lot smarter things than me. But to me, I think Xavier has shown you, shown everyone that he adds value at at multiple facets of the game that we just haven't seen from Tutu. Unfortunately, yeah. we've always been rooting for the guy, but this is year four now. We still haven't seen anything. So. Yeah, and they they tried to give him an opportunity, and he lost his job. I mean, I mean, it's just. It's just the way it is. It's the, the the cut and dry. And you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, Fifty three people on the roster. Each one of them has to have a, a a well defined role. What are you offering? What are you bringing to this team? And I just have a I have a hard time at answering that question or answering yeah answering that question uh, for for Atwell. Um, and it's there's a clearer answer for for Xavier Smith to me. La- last note uh, I'll say on the offense is. Uh, Two two running backs in that in a in that game, uh, both got a little banged up. Both came back. Uh, both uh, in terms of I haven't heard anything to the to the contrary, but um, um, just something to keep an eye on. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, Boston Scott and uh, Zach Evans, Zach the Evans. two backs again that played last week and this week, uh, both pretty efficient games. But yeah, both got banged up. So, um, yeah, so that. I assume that means those two guys are fighting for that fourth spot. And obviously Corum and Kyron are locks and Ronnie rivers looks like a lock for RB three. So um, I, there's no way to keep five running backs. So I think it's between yeah, those two and both have, they both have looked pretty good each week. Boston Scott, both weeks, I think has had the higher average per rush and they obviously signed him in free agency. So financial wise, he's probably, more likely to make it but it wasn't yeah. for some huge contract so we'll see and Ev- i feel like evans they could get through to waivers since they just drafted him last year didn't play at all hardly last year um i feel like they could sneak him through the waivers where scott's more of a known commodity that some team might be desperate for special teams and snatch him up yeah yeah no i think i think that's absolutely right so um all right we're going to the defense yet again looking solid uh, with the backups, let's just start with Omar Spates. This dude's <laughs> making the roster, right? This dude is making the 53 man roster. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's between he and Hummel and I mean, Hummel's not having a bad camp either. Yeah. I, I mean, I think they're both playing, playing pretty lights out. Spates is putting some highlights on, on, uh, uh, out there for everybody. So, I mean, I'm rooting, I'm rooting for him. I've got, I got nothing against Jake Hummel. If they could keep five, I would hope that they would keep all of them. Um, but yeah, he's just he's just making making one heck of a, a splash out there on special teams, which they absolutely absolutely need guys like that. But on the other hand, Hummel made some pretty spectacular plays last year uh, in the regular season on special teams as well. So I think it's a it's a it's a tough one. And and again, just talking about the waiver wire, a guy gets cut on the twenty seventh. He's got to go through all thirty one teams that can choose to pick him up or not pick him up, and. And yeah. he's got that highlight reel that you were talking about. So I think there are some some teams out there with which in the league right now, linebacker depth is at a is at a premium. Yeah. Um, so I, I if they do cut him, I don't I don't I don't know if he makes it through um, the waiver wire. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I agree. I think he's he's flashed too much to sneak through like that. That undrafted free agent tag only works if you've done like nothing on on film for the rest of the world to see like you could have a great camp but if the rest of the teams don't know that then yeah you can sneak through but this is now back-to-back games where he's flashed and and had some highlight reel plays and and some big hits and he's at the right place at the right time we know his college pedigree what he's been able to do in college and probably should have been drafted uh to be honest so based on what he did at at lsu and, and whatnot in years past so yeah i just i can't see with what he's done him not making the roster I just feel like he he needs to be on this team, but Hummel too, I, to your point has, has shown some really good things and he's been on the team for a few years and, and uh, has flashed really well and played good special teams last year. So it feels like, feels like both them make it and they might go lighter maybe in the secondary, whereas in years past they've kept 10 or 11 DBs. Yeah. Maybe they just go nine this year to, to stack up more, which, which feels silly to keep that many linebackers, but if they're able to do that on special teams, I mean, you're getting your money's worth out of it, right? Yeah, definitely. And and you know, he's he's a guy that can offer some obviously some uh 
um, a big impact in the special teams. And you think about guys like, you know, Trey Tomlinson, you know, you're not getting, you're not getting that, that kind of effect out of, you know, the, the five, nine, 185 pounder, um, on special teams. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the one curious one to me is, you know, Troy Reader's not playing. He, is he the two, two Atwell of the linebackers? <laughs> you know, is he the one that, you know, he, he's, he, he was slated to start in 2021, I think. Mm-hmm. And then got, ended up getting beat out by Ernest Jones and, you know, went on to a different team and he's kind of been bouncing all over the place. Um, but they obviously see something that they like in him. So I don't know. There's, yeah. That's, I know August fans. That, never, <laughs> huh? August, August 27th is when all this is going to get sh- shaken out, which is not, yeah. not far away. Not far away. So one more, one more preseason game that all comes crashing down after that. Um, yeah. I mean, you look at that room and, you know, Jones and Rose boom are obviously your locks. Hummel and Spates have played a lot. Fado Kasi, who you have said has had a really good camp. He's had an up and down preseason, but had a really good camp. Yeah. And then you have, you know, Elias Neal and, and Troy Reader. And yeah, I wouldn't, I don't expect them keeping more than four. But as we just talked about, is this a, is this a situation where they keep five um, because of what Spates and Hummel have been able to do in this preseason that you you don't want to lose them. But I, I you know, Troy Reader, I, you know, he was a Ram and on the Super Bowl team, and then was with the Chargers last year. I just, I don't know if I've, he's ever been a guy that I'm like, I'm not, I can't let go. Yeah. But obviously he's not playing again, similar to Toto Owl. Does that mean that he's a lock to make it? I, I don't know. Yeah. Don't well, know. It, well it, it brings up this, this kind of thing that, uh, you know, it's an internet discussion for sure, where, you know, does, does the preseason matter? And some people will say, no, they don't play any of their starters, uh, but there's still plenty to be learned. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's fun watching guys and it's fun rooting for guys like Omar Spates, uh, yeah. because they are undrafted because they, their potential, uh, went unrecognized through, you know, 200 and how many ever picks. Um, so, you know, I'm rooting for them, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, Trey readers played a lot of football and, um, you know, he has, he has been in real regular season games. Yeah, that, and that's and that's where I can just shrug my shoulders and say, hopefully they make the right decision. But Spates, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't think Spates is going to be around to be, uh, you know, on the practice squad or to be re-signed after waivers. So, yeah, yeah. Ask Spates if the preseason matters. Exactly. That's a great. That's that's a great comeback for that uh, that kind of thinking. Yeah, I I would say preseason in preseason everything matters but the score. But yeah, anything, right? I mean, that's you build your roster in the preseason. That's those are the guys that you're going to rely on late in the season when those injuries happen. Like it's it's extremely important. I don't care what the media says. And they're trying to get less preseason games. Coaches, we talked about. I won't go into a tangent. Cause we talked about last week, but I know coaches come out and say they get more value out of the the um, joint practice. you know, joint practices because they can simulate exactly what they want and really design things to really get the situational football they want. That's not how games work can't simulate games like you got to play the games preseason gives you a real life game situation and how you how you act upon it so um one more thing i want to talk about but is there any other defensive players you want to call out oh yeah new newly signed uh carlos watkins led the team in pressures huge strip sack uh there in the yeah. in the second half um you know he he wasn't going up against any of the ones, so I think he was outperforming uh, even his own potential on that one. But you, you gotta you gotta give a shout out, and also uh, you know we didn't realize uh, Laurel Murchison was hurt um, when we were talking about Watkins in the last episode. So that could you know definitely a reason that uh, Watkins was was brought in. Um, uh, so. Uh, Laurel Merchantson, obviously a guy to keep an eye out for a guy that's played, you know, starting football for the Rams and will definitely be doing it in the mix, uh, in the rotation, um, this year as well. So, yeah, no good. Shit out. You know, and I'm, I'm going to bring up uh Trey Tomlinson as well. Uh, another, another big, another big penalty that kept a drive alive that ended up uh, going all the way down to the one, one yard line where Easton stick, uh, just couldn't, handle a, a snap it was not the rams didn't force that turnover but uh you know trey tomlinson with with another costly uh costly penalty um so he he's kind of on my watch list of 
are they, you know, still on a rookie contract, not long into his career, but does, is, is he, is he a guy that has a place on this team with guys like, you know, Josh Wallace, uh, you know, Tanner Ingle, um, you know, these, these are all guys that, uh, you know, and then you think about the the high end guys that they added, the Darius Williams, you know, mm-hmm. Jerry Jacobs probably ahead of him uh, on the depth chart, you know, Trad- Tradavius White and Quentin Lake all, you know, rising to the to the starting place. And he, he's just a he, he's my uh, two two at on defense and they're about the same size. So it works. Out. Yeah. Well, I think uh, if my numbers are right, currently in the defensive back room, there's 20 guys. Um. And they usually keep 10. 10, I feel like, is the max you're keeping there. So there's 10 names, you know, getting cut. And, you know, when you look at your four or five, we'll call them five starters in Williams, Curl, Johnson, Tredavious White, and Quentin Lake, you got five spots after that. I think Russ East is probably close to a lock. I think Definitely. Jason Taylor's pretty close to a lock. Kobe Durant, I think, is is up there. And He's definitely gonna, ahead, ahead of Tomlinson. Yeah. And then after that, I mean, you got Sean Jolly, Jerry Jacobs, who they added. Cameron Kitchens is probably a lock, just drafted. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you, you're really looking at two spots between 12 guys. So, yeah, Tomlinson may be the, the – obviously, one of those 20 is Kendrick, who's on IR, so 19 guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's an uphill battle for him. And, you know, not – I'm not lightning what this means for him as a person and a player, but a sixth round pick. So not like they, it's a second round guy that all of a sudden they're cutting in year two. Um, but he has a, yeah, a little uphill battle for him. So good shout out there. And, and we'll see, he'll probably play a lot in week three, hopefully. And, and maybe we see some improvement because, you know, Jim Thorpe award winner at TCU. Want to see some of that nephew of the great Ladanian Tomlinson. So come on. Yeah. Such, such an interesting case. Cause he's, you know, he's five, nine. Uh, not, a, but it's not a slot guy. He barely played any slot while at TCU. Yeah. Uh, always on the outside. And and we, we've seen a guy that size, uh, specifically, uh, Darius Williams do just fine. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Taylor Tomlinson just, he was, he's, he's a, he's a ball hawker. He's a physical guy and just keeps getting penalties uh, yeah. when he's out there. Costly that, ones. That was the big concern when they drafted him was just, will his, is he too physical, too handsy? You can get away with that stuff in college and you just can't in the pros. And the thought was he's going to need to adjust his game to be able to be a lockdown corner, but not be too handsy and, and get penalties. And obviously, unfortunately, it hasn't translated and he gets those penalties. So that's the big blemish in his game right now that, you know, it's getting getting to the end of the rope, unfortunately, when you have that much depth. Um, so, yeah, we'll do that. But last thing I want to say, do you have anything else on, on player wise? Nope. Just want to give a shout out. Aubrey Pleasant. Head oh, yeah. coach all game gets a win. He is the secondary coach coaching this great depth uh, in that in that room. Um, but yeah, it was so cool to see him. And and you know we knew going into this that McVay said he's going to be the head coach. But I thought it was really cool how McVay literally was like gone, like away, like just like all right, this is your team for this game. You're in everything. You he was like he was just not even. It wasn't like he was in the booth with a headset like talking he probably did every now and then but overall this was aubrey pleasant's team it was so cool to see how the team responded to him how much love he got from his coaches how much praise he got and uh, i thought he called a really good game and and they got the win so super super kudos to aubrey pleasant yeah you could tell that he really was taking uh his role there that day just incredibly seriously um and you know he had some fun with it with the with the red flag uh the challenge flag i don't know if you saw that Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was, he was taunting, taunting McVeigh because McVeigh forgot his, his challenge flag, which, you know, tells you where his headspace is. Cause that guy's locked in on football. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, he, he's, he's not looking at these preseason games, uh, too terribly seriously, I guess, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, his, I would, I would say that the encouraging thing about his time in the booth that he spent, um, with, uh, the phenomena, this, they've, they've really become my favorite, uh, a trio of of game callers uh, specifically because Mina Kimes is incredible at what she does she's mm. just phenomenal like like what she says is smart uh you know she talks about things that matter um and she leaves out a lot of the fluff but she's also incredibly in- entertaining as well so just yeah. a quick shout out to her but getting back to McVeigh McVeigh is uh you know he he seemed uncomfortable in the booth he didn't seem like truly settled because he, he 
his, his, so much of his focus was on the field. Yeah. And, you know, even even when they did those kind of interstitials where he would he would talk to the the booth people, he was on the field, so he's yeah. probably a little bit more in his in his element, so he didn't feel so uh, much like a, a talking head. So I think you know maybe that experience showed that McVeigh will will stick around as long as we maybe not as long as we want, but uh, for maybe he's not as tempted to to hop into yeah. the booth so quickly. Well, he said, and you know, obviously he's not going to say anything wrong, but he said like he's like, Oh yeah, I'm no interest in being up here. I want to get that back down on the field. Like they asked him what he thought. And I can't remember the exact phrase he said, but basically it was like, yeah, no, I don't have any interest in being here. It didn't help that his mic wasn't working at first. Like to yeah. say them on the fly. Like that's, that's why I love watching live broadcasting. Like then Mina had to give him her microphone cause his wasn't working. So she was basically cut out of the segment. Just had to like sit there. Um, cause his mic wasn't working. And every time I, cause I remember at first when he was up there and one of the first questions I think wit asked him, um, who Whitworth has transitioned fantastically into the media. Like he's so good. Um, and McVeigh gave like a two word answer. I'm like, that is so unlike McVeigh. Like usually it's like this long. And I was like, what the heck? Like, that's so bizarre. And then you realize like, Oh, his mic just isn't working. Like it like cut off. So yeah, yeah. you hear a weird, weird thump and a, and a kerfuffle. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but I was like, that, that's not McVeigh, like a two word answer. Like, especially from responding to wit, like his former player. So yeah. Quick on the fly uh action trying to get the mics working but uh we've been there we've all been there it's good to see oh, it's good to see when abc has that issue not just lafb so you know yeah well and i discovered that the, the cbs was was doing the uh the chargers uh yeah. call and uh, i i watched i watched the, the ended up watching the rams one the whole time uh last note last note i'm gonna say josh riccardi missed his first field goal mm. in his professional career a 52 yarder so yeah you know, definitely not a gimme, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the pristine shine has worn off a little bit. Not that I'm worried whatsoever. Yeah. Seems totally like great. A, yeah. And, and the best they've had in a long time. So exactly. So, yeah, I think it's, it's feels good to know there's no kicker debate. He's the guy going in and yeah, when you're only misses a 52 yarder, you're, you'll take it. Well, Still, Tanner, Tanner Brown officially cut from the team as well. Officially cut. Um, and not to put any, any negatives because, big Cardi guys now Cardi in LA, but Cameron Dicker is still pretty good, right? 55 yarder. I think he hit what could yeah, have been hit a, hit a 58 yarder. The, the, the game before. And yeah. in, in terms of like an LA personality, that guy is, you know, just phenomenal not to talk about the charges anymore, but like, you know, he's out on a golf course eating hot dogs, uh, you know, like, as, you know, saying that, like, it's the thing that propels his, his, uh, his what do you call golfers. them? Like pocket dogs, pocket dogs. Yeah. Pocket yeah. dogs. Yeah. So great. A couple yeah. pocket dogs. So, which could mean other things too, but to him, it's just a hot dog. So just a hot dog in your pocket. Yeah. Little pocket dogs in the golf course out at Pelican Hill. So, um, well, that's a good way to end it. A good way to end the show. This is the Ram skinny here on the LAFB network. Thank you all for hanging out with us. We will be back before, uh, the final preseason game this weekend. So uh, we'll be back later in the week to preview that, but thank you all for hanging out with us. Uh, if you haven't already, please go to Rams LAFB on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe. If you're watching right now and haven't subscribed, please do that. It helps us out. And then you'll be updated every time we have a new show. We're going to start doing, as we talked about last episode, a lot more video content besides just our show. We'll do a lot more short form and just news and breaking stuff in video platform. Obviously LAFB network.com is where all of our content is all of our Rams content. Plus if you're a USC or UCLA fan, you can check that out over there. We will be, I'm just going to tease this. We will be launching the remaining LA sports soon as well. So all you Rams fans, I'm sure a lot of Dodger fans, Laker fans, we're bringing that all to you here very, very soon. I'm thrilled about that, but that'll be a little later, but at least, you know, gets you in the mood to make sure you're subscribed and everything. So you're updated. Um, and obviously on podcast, just search Ram skinny anywhere, get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, and uh, you can find us there, but that's skinny T I'm Ryan Dyer. Thank you all be well. We'll talk to you here in a couple of days.